Hello, welcome to physics. Today we're looking at specific heat capacity. So my first question to you, on a hot day, when you walk from sand onto grass, what happens? The sand seems to be really hot on your feet. The grass isn't. Why is this so? Shouldn't they be the same temperature? This is all to do with heat capacity. You could do an experiment to test this further. Say you get some oil and some water, put them into separate pans on a stove. You put 100 mils of oil in one, 100 mils of water. You turn your stove up to medium heat on both for both pans. What will happen after two minutes? Let's say the water got to 60 degrees Celsius and the oil will get to what? Will it be the same temperature? Specific heat capacity is the amount of thermal energy it takes to raise a substance, one kilogram of that substance, one degree Celsius. So each thing has a different specific heat capacity. So like our example at the start, sand has a different heat capacity to grass. Thus the sand feels um, hotter than the grass on a hot day. So we, when we talk about specific heat capacity, we can also use equations, a math equation. And when we look at heat capacity versus temperature, there is this thing called proportionality. Proportionality is an increase in one quantity that affects another quantity. So as one increases, the other one increases. So the amount of energy input into the system increases, the temperature will increase. Therefore, the energy input is proportional to the temperature. And you can see this in this formula. Q, the energy lost or gained, equals the mass times the specific heat capacity, C, times the change in temperature. And all of these, hopefully you're familiar with units of measurement. Q is in joules, mass is in kilograms, change in temperature is in degrees Celsius, and C is the specific heat capacity. And specific heat capacity units is here. All right, let's try some examples. How much thermal energy is required to heat the following items from 20 C to 110 C? We use our formula. Thermal energy required is the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. So we have our mass, we have our change in temperature, but we don't know our specific heat capacity. And this is where we need a table for specific heat capacity. So luckily enough, I have a table of specific heat capacity, as you can see on the right. I got this from the Oxford textbook for physics, New Century Physics. Um, but you can use whatever textbook that you have available. Or So scientists in the past have found the specific heat capacities for these substances doing experiments. So the first example, we're looking at three kilograms of sand. So we look up the specific heat capacity of sand, which is 880. So we substitute that in. The mass is in kilograms times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. It's gone up 90 degrees Celsius. So that is our thermal energy required Q in joules. So we could write that as kilojoules dividing by a thousand.
All right, B, we have a 220 gram glass cup. Similar to the last example, except this time we need it in kilograms, so we're dividing by a thousand. So convert the grams to kilograms, and then we want um, glass, which is over here. 664 for glass. And it's the same change in temperature. 47.2 joules of thermal energy to change the glass from 20 degrees to 110 degrees. All right, let's have a look at another example. If it takes 4,200 joules of heat to raise the temperature of 2 kilograms by 10 degrees, find the specific heat capacity of the object. So this time it's given us Q. It's given us the mass, and it's given us um, how much we're raising the temperature. So we're trying to figure out C this time. So we're going to have to rearrange the equation. So bring M and T over by dividing. You're left with C. This one's fairly simple. You should be able to do it in your head. So we've got 4200 divided by 20. So we'll lose a 0 and then 420 divided by 2. 210. Don't forget the units J per kilogram per kilogram C. Or you can write it as J K to the negative 1 C to the negative 1. Now it doesn't matter if you have C for Celsius or K because Raising something by C is the same as raising something by K. Because you may remember the temperature of Kelvin is equal to the temperature of Celsius plus 273. They have a linear relationship. So you raise something by 1 Celsius, it's the same as raising it by 1 Kelvin. So it doesn't matter if you write Kelvin or Celsius in the um, in the units, you'll get the same. Uh, you'll get the mark. All right. Question three. Um, so we have a two kilogram iron object. So we have the mass. And we have um, a change in temperature. Oh, sorry, no. We have the initial temperature. And it's gaining 4,300, which is Q. Now remember, this is joules, so that's all good. If it was kilojoules, we'd have to convert it. This is kilograms, so we don't have to convert it. And these are called the SI units, standard industry units. So we want it in kilograms, not grams. We want it in joules, not kilojoules. It wants us to find the final temperature. So hopefully you remember the formula. The change in temperature is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we don't know what that is, and that's what we're trying to find. All right, so we can substitute everything in. 
and then try and find the final temperature. So we got Q equal to the mass. I might just get rid of units to stop confusing people. Um, oh, it's, so it hasn't given us C, an iron object, so we have to look this up. Iron, according to the table, is 460. That's the specific heat capacity. And now we have a change in temperature, which is Tf minus the initial. So we're going to have to rearrange for Tf. So first of all, divide by these two numbers. And that leaves us with these two. So we divide both sides by two, both sides by 460. All right, now we're going to add 20 to both sides. And that should give us our final answer for the final temperature. So you should have got Tf is approximately equal to 24.6739 degrees Celsius as the final temperature. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I